In today's video, we're going to be painting Ewoks. This video will feature the painting tutorial for Logray, Wicket, and two boxes of Dear Closest Friends. The Ewoks have always been one of my favorite races in the Star Wars universe, and I suspect if you're watching this video, they probably are one of your favorites too. Let's do a quick unboxing of both boxes. Starting with the regular Ewoks, when you pull it out, you'll get a sheet that has a QR code for instructions and also a nice poster in the back. This is definitely going on my wall. You are also supplied with round bases for all the miniatures, some punch out tokens, and these cards. Basically for two different types of Ewok units, and then all their upgrade cards. And I'm going to flip through them over here so that you can have an idea of what you're buying before you pick up the set. Unlike earlier kits, these come in sprues. You'll have to clip them off. They don't come in loose pieces like they used to in the past. Next is Low Grey and Wicked, and opening the box up, you'll get another instruction sheet and then this cool poster of Wicked. Two bases, some punch out cards, some command cards, and I will slow down, flip through them so you can take a quick look at what they are. After that are the unit cards for Wicked as well as Logray. Interestingly, they also give two more unit cards, Chewbacca and C-3PO. Now you're going to need separate miniatures for these, but it's nice to have different unit cards to use them as. The box also comes with these upgrade cards. Just like the Ewoks, Logray and Wicked also come on sprues. You can have to snip them off and assemble them. And in order to do this, you'll want to scan the QR code, go to Asmodee's website, and then hit the assembly diagrams link where you can get specific instructions for these kits. Here's an example of instructions for the Ewoks. These are fairly easy to put together, but if this is your first time building miniatures, you probably wanted to download this. The Ewoks can be built into either skirmishers or slingers. They have different arm options and I will show you an example of them put together. I won't go through the step-by-step -step assembly, that's fairly easy to do, but you'll want snippers, hobby knife, and also some plastic glue. Here is the axe guy and the trapper, but the other variants are the skirmisher on the left and the slinger on the right. You'll notice that the Ewoks look exactly the same except for their arms. Here is a shot of Logray and Wicket put together. Before we start painting these, we're going to have to prime them. I use some paint sticks or just regular long sticks and then use a two-sided tape or just fold it over duct tape and then I apply it onto the sticks and then after that, I put all the models on these sticks. This just helps me prime a little bit faster. I won't be painting it like this, but I will be priming it on these sticks. It's just a little bit quicker to do and less messy. For the priming step, you can use white aerosol primer or you can use this white airbrush primer that I usually prefer. You just spray it onto all the models and just paint them all white from all angles. After you're done priming, pry all the models off of the sticks so that you can get better access all the way around. Next, I will be painting the fur of the Ewoks. You've probably noticed that Ewoks come in a lot of different colors of fur. But in order to keep things simple, I'm not going to overcomplicate it. What I'm going to do is just use five speed paint colors. Holy White, Hardened Leather, Dark Wood, Gray Flirt Gray, and Palette Bone. And since these kits have a lot of identical poses, what I'm going to do is just kind of vary the colors and just make sure that one pose doesn't have the same color twice. For instance, I use Holy White on Low Gray, but I also include two other Ewoks of different poses or different weapon types. Wicked, I'll paint with hardened leather and I include a few more of his friends with different weapons or different poses. And I continue doing this for the other three colors, with the intent of making sure that no two Ewoks are alike. Base coating using Army Painter Speed Paints is a complete cinch. I'll start with Holy White, and with a medium pointed tip brush, I apply it onto low gray's fur. I am careful not to apply it onto anything that I'm going to be painting other colors, for instance, his staff, his satchel, and his headgear. And then for the other Ewoks, I leave their headgear and their weapons primed white. 
Next, I move the hardened leather, and this is the color that I'm going to put on our buddy Wicket. So he is a brown looking Ewok, as you can see from these movie clips right here. So I want to be painting him this rich, slightly lighter brown color. As I'm painting Wicket this hardened leather color, I also paint the tree trunk that he's standing on with the same color as well. It just works really well for wood applications. So I just do Wicket and the trunk all in one fell swoop. Next, I continue putting this hardened leather onto the other Ewoks that I've picked to have this color. And then with the same color and the same brush, I just go ahead and just batch paint them. It's just a quick, efficient way to work. Switching to dark wood, this color works really well on the shafts of the spears. So I paint that as well as any of the Ewoks that I chose to have this color. Next, I essentially do the same thing with Grey Floor Grey Speed Paint. I batch paint any of the Ewoks that I wanted to look grey. I do likewise with Palette Bone, which gives some of the Ewoks a lighter brown appearance. And between the five colors, you're going to have a nice variety of Ewoks that look like it's random and every Ewok looking different, even though they share similar poses. Also note that this color works really well on those two little horns on top of some of the Ewoks. Next, I revisit the models that were painted with other colors with hardened leather. For instance, if a model was previously painted wholly white, I go back and paint its tree trunk hardened leather. And then I go down to maybe the dark wood model and paint that one. And I also use hardened leather on any of the slingers. I paint their slings with this brown. And I also pick out basing details like this little clump of dirt over here. I paint that brown as well. And for some of the models that are not painted in hardened leather, I paint their headgear brown. It's important not to paint hardened leather models with hardened leather headgear. It's just going to look like one monotonous color. But for the other colors, hardened leather colored headgear works really well. In similar fashion, I revisit the models that are not painted with dark wood with dark wood color. For instance, low gray, I go back and paint his staff with this dark wood. And also if there are any other shafts of weapons for models that were painted other colors, I go back and touch them up with some dark wood. And for two or three models that were not painted in dark wood, I paint their headgear in dark wood just to give it a dark brown appearance. And this looks really good on the lighter colored models. Next is Grey Floor Grey. Now, Low Grey has a lot of gray stripes that run up and down his body. I use this Grey Floor Grey speed paint and with a detailing brush, I apply these stripes onto him. Grey Floor Grey is also a great color for all the stone weapons that the Ewoks use. I put it on all the hammerheads and all the spearheads on your weapons. And like before, models that were not painted Grey Floor Grey can get some headgear in Grey Floor Grey. I do this on maybe two or three models max. Next, I revisit Palette Bone and I put this light brown speed paint onto the horn of the leader models. And then for Low Gray, he has bits on his staff and the skull on his headgear that you'll want to paint Palette Bone. This light brown color is also great for any rope or cord that you see on the models. For instance, what they use to bind their weapons together. If you see any of those features, paint them Palette Bone. This color works really well for the rope that's around the left shoulder of the trapper. Once you're done with the previous steps, you may have a few models that still do not have any color on their headgear. Ewok attire comes with a surprising number of colors, including red, orange, and even blue. So, in order to represent this, I'm going to use these three speed paint colors. Starting with Slaughter Red, I put this on Wicket's headgear. So he has a dirty red headgear. And this color is going to be the base for that. And then I also pick one or two other models and paint those red as well. And then I switch colors 
and apply orange on again one or two models just to create some variety and to instill interest and for the last remaining models i apply cloud burst blue which is a darker blue darker colors really work well for ewok attire the last speed paint i'm going to use is grim black and this i'm going to apply to the headgear of low gray so he's special in that his headgear actually has some black parts to it and grim black really works well for this Another feature that gets green black are all the stones that are inside the slings of the slingers. I also use green black for the eyes of all the Ewoks. And I use a detailing brush for this so that I can be very precise to avoid any overpaint. I now switch to skeletal bone, which is a regular acrylic paint, not a speed paint. And for this, I'm going to apply to all the fingers and as well as the toes of all the Ewoks. This may be a small detail, but it's actually very surprising how much it accents the model and creates areas of interest. I also apply this onto the feathers on Low Gray's satchel. For some of the bases that have leaves, I use Orc Skin Army Painter Speed Paint, and this goes easily on those leaves just to make them green. Next, I'm going to use Strong Tone Wash, and only in a few areas. Wicked's headgear is actually a very dirty red. So applying some Strong Wash to this area makes it a little bit browner and dulls the color so that it's not so bright. I also apply this wash onto all the tree trunks, especially for models that were painted hardened leather on the tree trunk as well as on the Ewok. This creates some differentiation between them. Watching Return of the Jedi, you'll notice that the Ewoks don't have exactly black eyes. There is, in fact, a tinge of red in them. So I use Dragon Red acrylic paint and a detailing brush, and I dot each of the eyes in the center with red. Next, for the bases. I clean the rims of the bases up with some black primer and a brush. And you may have to apply one or two layers of primer just to make sure it's nice and black. You'll do it all the way around the rims. And then after that, you'll pick out some flocking, like this green flocking that I have from Army Painter. And with some white glue or Elmer's glue, use an old brush and apply it onto the top of all the bases. After that, you can take the whole base and just dunk it into the flocking material. And there you go, you have a completed model. Protect your work with two coats of matte varnish and you're all done. And just like that, you have Ewoks ready to do battle on the tabletop for the game of Star Wars Legions. Here are some 360 degree views of my completed models. Here are the Slingers and the Skirmishers. Some of the upgraded troops. And last but not least, Low Grey and Wicked. And with that, you should be done painting up your Ewoks and Champions. And it's time for some Yup Nup. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have a lot of fun painting up your Ewoks just like I did. Happy gaming and I hope to see you in a future video. Take care.